Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about solving difficult or more difficult trig equations using what we learned in Chapter 8.4 on the Pythagorean identities and the different relationships among the functions. So again, our objective is to use trig identities to solve more difficult trig equations. All right before we uh, get into that, I want to cover a couple things real quickly for you. Uh, what is the difference between sine squared x and sine x squared? Right, so sine squared x is sine of x times sine of x, and sine x squared is just sine x squared. So let's see how that plays out. Uh, if we evaluate uh, x as pi over 4, we could say sine squared x is sine x times sine x. Uh, sine of pi fourths is root 2 over 2. So root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 ends up being equal to 1 half. So sine squared x is sine x times sine x. If we evaluate it pi force, sine of pi force is root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 is 1 half. Now if we evaluate the same value for x <clears throat> as sine x squared, I end up with sine of pi squared over 16, which ends up being approximately 0.58, uh, not the same as 1 half, but close. Uh, but you're evaluating a number which is not the same uh, because the mathematical requirements or requests of sine x squared and sine squared x are both different. So please keep that in mind as we go through the process of solving these trig equations. All right, so uh, next thing I want to talk about is uh, solving for a particular variable by dividing by a variable. In this case, I want you to think about what is mathematically uh, improper uh, about dividing uh, by x to solve for this problem. So I have x squared is equal to x. I'm going to divide both sides by x. Uh, x squared divided by x is x. x divided by x is 1. I end up with x is equal to 1. All right, so the problem with that is that when you divide by a variable, uh, you can potentially eliminate an answer. In this case, we eliminated the answer as 0 because 0 is also a possible answer. So uh, the correct process would be to subtract x from both sides x squared minus x is equal to 0, then distribute out an x, x times x minus 1 is equal to 0, and then x ends up being equal to 0 or 1. So remember your zero product property, which says that if a or b, a times b is equal to 0, neither a is 0 or b is 0. So in this case, <clears throat> the a value for x ends up being equal to 0, 0 times any value here will end up being equal to 0, and that's the uh, one of the solutions that we eliminated when you divided by the variable. All right, so now we're going to go through four uh, problems, and I'm going to pause for each one. You're going to solve them, and then I'm going to show you the answers and go through them quickly. So I'm going to take a moment to pause. All right, so 2 sine squared x minus 1 is equal to 0 for uh, the values uh, uh, between x is equal to or greater than 0 and 360 degrees. 2 sine squared x is equal to 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Sine squared x is equal to 1. Now I can rewrite sine squared x as sine x uh, times sine x. I take the square root of this value, and I end up with uh, sine of x is equal to plus or minus uh, uh, the square root of 1 half. So please don't re uh, forget the plus or minus, adding the plus or minus value when you take the square root of a squared value. So if I take the square root of a squared value, then I need to add plus or minus to the other side. So plus or minus the square root of 1 half, which is the same as uh, plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. And I end up in degrees as 45, 135, 225, and 315 for the value of x between uh, 0 and inclusive of 0 and 360. All right, on to the next question. All right, I'm going to pause for a moment here while you complete this problem. All right, so uh, what we're going to do first, one of the strategies, there are a couple strategies in solving uh, more difficult trig equations. One is to rewrite all the functions in terms of one variable without dividing by a variable. Uh, in this case, sine of x is going to be our variable. We see cosine squared x is another variable, and what we want to do is rewrite cosine squared x in terms of sine. So cosine squared x from the Pythagorean identity is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So uh, by replacing cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x, 
we end up with sine squared x minus sine x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. All right, the second strategy is to move all the values uh, for the variable to one side of the equation and then use what you know about factoring and solving uh, and the zero product property, which we explained in the prior slide, to solve for uh, the variable sine of x. Now, if you take a look after you move everything to the left-hand side of the equation, you look at this expression, and it looks much like a quadratic expression, and that's what it is with a variable sine of x. So we're going to factor uh, 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 uh, using what we know about factoring quadratics into 2 sine x plus 1 times sine x minus 1. And then is equal to 0. So now we can solve using, again, our zero product property. 2 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0 is the same as sine x equals negative 1 half. And we uh, end up with 7 pi 6 over 11 pi 6 uh, and pi over 2. So uh, in degrees, it would be uh, 210, 330, and then 90 degrees as your answers for this problem. OK, I'm going to move on to problem number three. Solve for sine x, tan x equal to 3 sine x for between 0 and inclusive of 360 degrees. So I'm going to pause here. All right, so the second, again, the second uh, strategy was to move all the values over to one side of the equation and then distribute. And that's what we're doing here. Instead of trying to simplify tangent, uh, it becomes rather confusing. You're still uh, introducing a second variable if you write tangent as sine uh, over cosine. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the two variables here. Uh, we're going to subtract uh, 3 sine x from both sides. We end up with sine x times tangent x minus 3 sine x is equal to 0, which I can rewrite by distributing the sine x out from each of uh, the terms, sine x times tan x minus 3. Uh, and so I end up with two values that uh, could be equal to 0. a times b is equal to 0. Either a has to be 0 or b has to be 0. A in this case, sine x is equal to 0. Uh, sine of x is 0 at 0 and 180 degrees. Uh, then uh, tan x minus 3 is equal to 0. Tan of, tangent of x is equal to 3. Uh, and I'm going to solve this first for radians and then convert to degrees. So I get uh, 1.25 or 4.39 radians. Uh, if I take the inverse uh, sine of tangent of uh, inverse tangent of 3, I end up with uh, 1.25 or 4.39. Uh, radians. And then, by the way, for this problem, you'll need to use your calculator in degrees 71.62 degrees or 251.5 degrees. Okay, I'm going to move on to the last question, a little bit more challenging. Solve 2 sine x is equal to cosine x for between 0, inclusive of 0, and 360 degrees. I'll pause for a moment while you challenge yourself with this problem. All right, so. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, in this case, we're going to uh, not divide by cotangent. Um, all right, so actually, it's a plus, I'm, I want you to solve for this problem. Sorry. Uh, I want you uh, 2 sine x is equal to cosine x plus 1. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to start by evaluating uh, the Pythagorean identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Uh, and then I want to rewrite uh, the values for sine x in terms of cosine x. So sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. <clears throat> I can rewrite as sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. If I take the square root of both sides, I end up with the square root of sine squared x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared x, which I can rewrite as sine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared x. And the reason why I did that was because I wanted to replace sine of x with uh, some function that uh, utilizes cosine x so that I can rewrite the expression just in terms of one variable. Uh, and I mentioned before, this is a fairly challenging problem. So now we're going to take what we know about sine x, and we're going to replace uh, sine x with plus or minus a square root of 1 minus cosine squared x. So now it looks like two times, right, I replaced sine x with plus or minus 1 minus cosine squared x is equal to cosine x plus 1. All right, so now I, I want to replace the cosine x uh, with cosine squared x, and I want to get rid of the radical here. So I'm going to square both sides. Uh, I'm going to square 2 plus or minus 
the square root of 1 minus cosine squared x and cosine x plus 1, so I can get rid of the, ra of the radical. Uh, and I end up with 4 times 1 minus cosine squared x is equal to uh, cosine x plus 1 squared, which ends up being uh, cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1. So if you FOIL this value, uh, you'll end up with cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1. I'm going to FOIL the 4 or distribute the 4 across uh, the values 1 minus cosine squared x and end up with 5 or 4 minus 4 times cosine squared x is equal to cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1. And now I'm going to rewrite all the values uh, so that they're all on one side of the equation. I end up with 5 times cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x minus 3. Right, so that a lot happened there. You might need to pause this to look through my work. But now we have uh, the uh, equation uh, that looks like a quadratic, which we can solve for a quadratic. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. All right, so 5 cosine squared x plus 2x minus 3, I'm going to factor into 5 cosine x minus 3 times cosine x plus 1, and then solve for these values. Co 5 cosine x minus 3 is equal to 0, or cosine x is equal to 3 fifths. And I end up with 53.1 and 306.9 degrees. And then cosine x is equal to negative 1. Uh, which is 180 degrees. So I'm going to leave this here for a moment for you to take a look at. Uh, that is the last problem for our classwork. Please join us next time in the next edition of Otten Math where we start exploring uh, law of sines and cosines in uh, chapter 9 in the next edition of Otten Math.